Hey friends, welcome to Hot News on your Wednesday. On your Wednesday, nobody else's Wednesday. This one is for you and you alone. You're special enough that the universe created an entire day just for you as a human. Don't you feel loved? Well, you're gonna love the hot news that we have today. I'll tell you that much at least. So let's get on into it. Let's talk about uh, what could be potentially what we're expecting to be the NVIDIA RTX 2080 super killer. Destroy it because there has been some leaked, or rather, uh, just tweeted about information regarding a Navi 12 die and how it's going to be a big GPU, which quite good, quite good. I mean, if you consider the fact that the 5700 XT is basically on par with the 2070 and can match 2070 Super when overclocked, and then uh, it's also at 300 and. $99 at that, that is quite good. And if we get a bigger Navi die that AMD could actually roll out, we could see something that's competing with the 2080 and 2080 Super for hopefully a lot less. But given uh, AMD's track records of creating big GPUs that are supposed to compete with the competition, but also come in at the exact same price point that was established by the competition a year and a half earlier. We can't necessarily hold our breath, but the debating that uh, AMD did with regards to Navi the first round makes me kind of hopeful they could actually be price competitive with NVIDIA on this next round of big Navi cards that are coming out. If it's a big Navi GPU and it can take on the 2080 Super for let's say $599, well then they, they get my money. Cause I mean, it's a 1080 Ti at $600, which granted is not where I wanted to be two years down the line, but Moore's law is dead. What can you do? besides stab his grave. Not that I advocate for grave stabbing. It should dig things anyways. Let's, why would you stab dirt? Don't make no sense. <laughs> Speaking of dirt, let's talk about AMD's uh, earnings report yesterday, which to be fair, actually came in accordance to what they were expecting for the Q2 earnings. They were down year on year from Q2 last year, driven by what they said was lack of GPU sales in multiple different, I mean, and other losses there. But one of the big things was their stock took a slight hit because they decreased their earnings expectations for Q3, which is odd because they just launched Ryzen 3000 and Navi, which you would expect to increase their revenue by more than what they were forecasting. But based on the Q2 earnings call, they said that they're gonna earn about $180 million less in revenue for Q3 when all is said and done. So weird, I don't know. You could check it out. The big things for AMD is obviously the new Ryzen launches, but then also they're banking hard on Epic and they're expecting that to make up a decent chunk of their business sometime soon, which we'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but I wanna cover a couple other things and then we'll get back to some AMD news. Just chill, okay? You don't need all of your AMD front loaded. It's not something that is good for your soul. So let's talk about actually something that's quite cool, which is Toby Spotlight technology. In case you don't know of the company Toby, they're actually kind of known for their eye tracking technology. Anybody who did those don't look challenges on YouTube, or I mean, it was also used in gimmicks on MSI's laptops at one point. It's, it, it was a weird technology with not a whole lot of technical use cases for everyday gamers, but it was pretty cool because it did work pretty effectively. However, they're now going to be rolling that out to VR technology using dynamic foveated rendering. So essentially they're gonna be building in eye tracking to a VR headset and it's going to allow the rendering to happen where your eyes are looking. However, this is only going to happen with graphics cards that have variable rate shading, which is NVIDIA at this point. Intel should have it, AMD has a patent for it, but they haven't rolled it out in any of their GPUs as of yet. But NVIDIA having variable rate shading would allow them to do foveated rendering, which means making sure that what you're looking at is rendered at the highest detail and everything else is not rendered at that high detail so that you reduce the amount of performance that you actually need. They have a couple of uh, charts showing no variable rate shading using GPU load about like 24%, but then if you use dynamic foveated rendering, it drops the GPU load by half, which is could be good. Could be good. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. I like the technology. I'd like to see it implemented first, and then uh, that actually seems like the least way, least gimmicky way to implement it. And then let's also find out about Apple's earnings report. So they uh, they made a lot of money. They increased year on year. They said it was their biggest June quarter ever, uh, all time record. With strong wearables, strong iPad and Mac. Except for the iPhone. They said that there's a significant improvement in iPhone trends, but it also kind of dragged down their revenue. 
they're also waiting for the iPhone 11, but Apple making enough money. And then in case you care about Navi cards, we're getting back to the AMD news now. Uh, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. And then we also have more AMD news because I didn't structure this episode properly. Uh, the ASRock 5700 XT Challenger Edition is supposed to be launching sometime in mid-August according to a support email sent back to somebody who was inquiring about the launch dates mid August is when you should see it. And then also apparently uh, there's some indication that AMD plans to hold an Epic Rome event on August 7th. Epic being the CPU, Rome being the new uh, name for the, the, the Epic server stuff. So we could expect like 64 core, 128 thread, seven nanometer gorgeousness. Speaking of Epic stuff, there is some talk in the rumor mill and kind of in the industry that Google is getting fed up with Intel server departments. And it looks like they're starting to begin the transition to Epic server CPUs because of the better environment, the better support architecture, and the just, I mean, better CPUs that AMD kind of really has when it comes to higher core count. Kind of cool, kind of cool, gotta watch that. You know what else is kind of cool, kind of cool? Nintendo Switch Lite, it's available for pre-order right now. You can use our Amazon affiliate code down in the video description. Give us a kickback when you're buying a Switch Lite. I'm gonna get it in the, the Aqua version. And also, in case you care about games for the Nintendo Switch, The Outer Worlds is coming to the Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo had some discussion about their earnings report and the Switch is continuing to sell like hot switches. 2.13 million units sold last quarter. They're on pace to uh, hit 18 million total units sold by holiday this year, considering the fact that they're launching the Switch Lite and an updated version of the Switch. And they have Android on the Switch now, which UFD tech video coming out this weekend on that. Um, they, they should sell more than ever. And the used market for Switches should be quite high, especially if you have like a first generation Switch, like you bought it towards the beginning with an unpatched Tegra, you could probably sell those for good money on eBay right now. And then just pick up the new one that's gonna have a better battery life because it has the new SFC on a new process. That would be the that would be the gamer move to do. This is a pro gamer move, my friends. In case you wanna make money, you don't care about hacking your Switch, sell your hackable Switch on eBay, I think. I don't know, I haven't looked at the prices. And then more AMD news. Here you go. The 19.7.3 Radeon drivers that came out actually have ruined the reference model of the 5700 and 5700 XT's fan speed by increasing the minimum idle fan speeds to 50%. That's on a blower style cooler. You wanna know what that sounds like? And apparently the new driver that came out after it, the 19.7.4, didn't fix the issue. Uh, apparently if you just update to 19.7.4 and you skip 0.3, you should be fine. But uh, in case you went to 0.3 before that, you might be screwed. And then NVIDIA taking some bold claims, trying to leap into the future beyond what everybody else can see. They say that the first AAA game that's going to require a ray tracing GPU is coming out in 2023. I mean, Intel's confirmed that they're working on ray tracing hardware. AMD has plenty of patents, and it's also been confirmed that it's coming to the next generation of consoles. This kind of makes sense. If consoles have it, then yes, it would make sense that AAA games would require ray tracing. Good job, NVIDIA. Way to call something that everybody else is doing. I know you built dedicated ray tracing hardware. I'm just making a joke. Anyways, ray tracing RTX support is now out on Blender as well, in case you care about that. And then let's talk about a dope monitor, which you can maybe consider if you have the moolah to cash out for it. Do you like 240 hertz? Do you like 400 nits brightness? Well, do you like a low response time? Pfft, you have 0.5 milliseconds? That's old news. How about we decrease it by a sheer 20%? Get down to 0.4 milliseconds. Well, if you look at Acer's new uh, gaming monitor, freaking wow. 0.4 milliseconds, 240 hertz. And then in the creepiest little bit of news that I have for you guys today, you know how like sometimes humans go too far and we just do things we probably shouldn't have done and we mix animals and humans, we create chimeras. Well, up until recently, you, we, we could just do embryos, okay? Like you can't, you can't bring that to fruition. You can't, like you, you don't have any living chimeras out there. No pigs headed human, no minotaurs basically. They're like no minotaurs out in the wild, right? Well, apparently a Japanese scientist has just gotten approval to bring the first chimera to full term and actually birth rats with human cells in them. This is just the start, my friends. You think the cat CGI that you're seeing on the screen right now is the beginning? No, that's not gonna be CGI in a few years. That's gonna be a real human animal. 
what do we call them? This is an ethical dilemma, my friends. It's crazy. The, the, the scientific aspect behind this part is totally fine. Rats that have some cells that would help them with like actual drug testing or kind of growing things that could potentially be used in humans. I get that. What happens when they start taking on sentience? Wait, no, animals already have sentence, sentience. What happens when they start taking up philosophy? What are you gonna do when a rat's in your philosophy 101 class, huh? And then let's close it off with something a little cheerier. Uh, the Blair Witch game is coming out. In case you don't remember the phenomenon that happened pre-internet. No, the internet was around pre viral marketing. It was technically one of the first viral marketing things that ever existed based on fake news. The Blair Witch Project is a shaky cam movie from 1999. Anyways, there's a game and there's a trailer. Check it out in case you want to be spooked. And that's the end of Hot News. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Really appreciate y'all being here with me on this as we prepare for the human animal hybrids to take over. This is, I mean, if the ancient Egyptians couldn't have warned us of this with all of their Anubis pictures and like, I mean, Genesis 6 and the Bible and freaking, I mean, the Anunnaki, this, I mean, it's all in ancient literature, my friends. I'm not going down that conspiracy theory road right now, but I'm just saying that's the end of hot news. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, get subscribed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.